Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, TKK. Check it out. Today's video is going to be an interesting one. We're going to kind of go left a little bit, but we're going to be talking about technology. Today, I'm going to be modding my original PlayStation 2. Now, the whole reasoning behind this, what motivated and start this, sparked this whole idea for me to do this was my arcade stick review. If you haven't seen it, let me go ahead and put a YouTube card right there. You can pause this video and check it out. Um, love this stick. This is the 15th anniversary arcade stick. And within the video, if you've seen it already, I was unable to test this thing. So for the life of me, I don't even know if this thing works to this day right now. I don't. So I knew I had an original PlayStation 2. And after I had did my Dreamcast arcade stick review, you can check that out. Also, I'll throw that card there too. I had got an adapter for it and was able to connect it to my my TV. Now, none of my TVs have component or composite inputs on them. I got OLEDs all through the house. And so I got an adapter for the Dreamcast. It worked perfectly. I think the review turned out well. And so I'm like, man, let me try to revisit this stick. But in order for me to do that and to get it to work, I need the PlayStation to work. So hence, here we are. We are going to be modifying my original PlayStation 2. We're going to get a look into all the parts that are needed and I'm going to go over telling you the things that you need to do to get this done right after my intro. All right, man. So the PlayStation 2, in my opinion, my personal most humble opinion is probably the greatest console of all time now my reasoning behind that is similar to why i made a video a week ago maybe two weeks ago depends on when you're seeing this calling the c9 lg oled the greatest oled of all time um simply put this console gave us so much number one the backwards compatibility was just phenomenal everything just worked you you put it in and you had your PS1 games working, right? Number two, they had the catalog, DVD player. I mean, it was just like, I can go on and on and on. This thing was just phenomenal. It was, it was ahead of its time, and I can truly understand why this console sold as much as it did. Um, and so I'm glad that I still have this. Uh, I did clean it off last night, you know, in preparation for this video. It had a lot of dirt and smudge on it. I got me some condensed air and was able to clean it out. I did not physically open it. And the cool thing is I do have the seal still on it, right? So still got that sticker there. So never cracked open or anything like that. And I'm not the, the type of guy that really does a lot of modding. I, I would personally rather just play the games on PC because I can have the entire catalog of everything just at my desktop it's just convenience at that point but this is a cool concept where i feel like i'm comfortable i don't have to open this thing up i don't have to work with any kind of tech that i'm not familiar with and so come on baby you can hug me i love you baby. i love you too baby okay okay all right we're gonna keep going we're gonna keep going so yeah um so yeah we're good PlayStation 2. There's a couple of things that I did get. I'll be sure to link all of these in the description. I'm not affiliated. So this is purely just like for tutorial purposes. We're going to see how this thing works out. Number one, the back of the console had the ability to put in like um, a LAN adapter. I never used that. Xbox was the better platform for me for playing games online, but that's there. This device right here cost me about 30 bucks manufactured by GameStar. Again, it'll be in the description for you to shop this if you want. This is a GameStar network adapter. So it has this proprietary port that when you get this, it comes with the clear covering. It's pretty much a plug and play solution, right? So it just goes right on. And it has two screws there, flatheads that allow you to bolt this in. The cool thing about this, this is what's really awesome. This actually has a SATA connector. So I have a spare solid state drive laying around, although I'm not gonna get SSD speeds, I could just plug this up in theory, like so. Don't even gotta drill it in. Mount this this way. 
and we'll be good to go. Uh, I'll get that in there and I'll, I'll be able to screw this in uh, and you get the idea. It, it'll just work. So that's one piece. So that's how I'm going to get all my games. I'm going to put my games, just load them onto this drive, make it so they work. Okay. That way. So first things first, I'm going to take my drive because I have a solid state drive kind of can let this hang here. If you're using a mechanical drive, which by the way, this thing can take up to a two terabyte. Um, I won't say pointless to get a two terabyte because I do have the entire collection of PlayStation 2 games. You can't fit them all on there, but this 275 gig solid state just kind of kind of hang there. Got the power and the data cable plugged to it. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to be going to the computer, turning it on and getting this drive formatted. All right, cool. I want to keep this raw. I don't want to really take it to the capture card um, piece of it. So first thing you want to do is go to disk management. You can find it down in your search bar. Once you get to your search bar, type in disk management. Um, you're going to have whatever drives that you have available, accessible, whatever their names are and whatever chronological order your computer has is set. So what we need to do is we need to figure out which drive we plugged in. For me, it's going to be disk three unknown. 256.17 gigs is what we got there. Now I've already done this, but you need to format this. This drive needs to say that it's unallocated in order for this process to take advantage or to take place. This needs to be unallocated. So you can see these all say they're healthy, they're blue, unallocated. You're going to see a black bar if you're using Windows 10, Windows 11 works all the same. From there, we are going to go over to where I have this program and I'll put this in the description. This is WinHIP, HIP as in H-I-I-P, right? So when you get WinHIP, download it, you extract it, you'll have a folder there. Should look something like this. This video is being recorded February 19, 22. 1.7.6 is the latest iteration. You want to go down to the application, right click it and run it as an administrator. It's been known to have some issues if you run it and it's not in administration mode. When HIP opens up, it's going to ask you to make a donation, which is totally cool. Support who you want to support. In this case, I'm not telling you you need to do that. But if you should choose to do that, go ahead and do that. I'm not affiliated with this program. I don't own this program. I don't know the person that owns this. I'm just the guy showing you this. Going to hit OK. Here you're going to see some different options. Now, prior to me doing this, I've already got my drive formatted. So you would be selecting which drive you have. As you can see, I got PC, 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 PS2, right? This would say PC also. You would select this drive. Once you select the drive, it's going to give you an opportunity to format it. That formatting, what it's going to do is it's going to put it in a state if, that will say PS2. So to make it so that the console can actually read the drive. Okay. Once we get to that point, we're pretty good. We can do just about anything that we need to do as far as getting games installed, run to it. You can go to options, override application mode. You got 48 bit HD loader. All of these should be preset for you. If they're not, I would encourage just having them set there. I didn't have any issues my first time making sure that was all working. Select your drive. When I select this drive, it pulls up the games that I do already have there. As I said, I already got this situated and managed. So I've got Capcom versus SNK2, God of War, God of War 2, Chaos Legion, GTA Vice City, Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty, Substance, Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater. So these are the games that I currently have there. And it gives you some logistics about the sizing, things of that sort, right? If I want to add more games, you're going to go to Add Image. Once you're on Add Image, you're going to click that again. Now you're going to go to where you have those on your PC. In this case, I got one particular drive on this particular computer. It's got PlayStation 2 catalog. So go to wherever my games are. And wherever these games are is where you're going to get them. So just scrolling through this catalog of titles, I know that I want to get Street Fighter Alpha. It's about 4.5 gigs. So I've clicked it, hit open, and it's there. I'm going to add another game. I 
I want to get the Street Fighter. And this is the game, ironically, that I am looking to use the stick for. So this game came out at the same time the stick did. So I'm going to also add this to the collection. So for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to kind of show you in real time what the, I'm going to call it a render time looks like. So after we have those two images there, we're just going to hit start. And it's going to do one game at a time. So right now it's doing the ISO of the Street Fighter Alpha Anthology, which is the collection of Alpha games. Transfer rate right now, 110 megabytes per second. About a minute. I mean, and you gotta think, if this game is 4.4 gigs, the other game is 3.2 gigs, we shouldn't have a long time with this, but I'm gonna let this run for the duration of the video. I'm not gonna speed it up just so you can get kind of like the realism of this. All right, boom. So now we've got um, the actual anniversary collection, the 15th anniversary collection going. And as soon as this finishes up, I'm gonna unplug the drive from my PC and then we'll, we'll get this connected to the PlayStation 2. But I just want you to be able to see this First time I'm ever doing a, you know, a tutorial like this, so I'll get better over time. They'll be more organic. Bam. So that's did what it's need to do. You can exit out of here. You can download any games that you have. All right, now let's get to the PlayStation. Okay, team. So we've got the crucial SSD that I have. It's a SATA connection. So that's the cool thing again about this particular GameStar unit. Um, as I said, this thing will allow the console to read up to two terabytes. Um, so you just kind of got to do the math on how many games you have in your collection. What are you looking to get? If you have the entire collection of PlayStation 2 games, there's no way two terabytes is going to be enough. It's, it's not enough. I've got like 12 terabytes worth of uh, PlayStation 2 games. So uh, the two terabytes definitely wouldn't be sufficient um, for you to get every single iteration of different discs that were created for that. Um, but enough of that ramble. So connectivity is pretty simple. You're just matching the state up. You got one for data and one for power, right? That's going to go like so. This is toolless, which means there are no tools needed for you to be able to get the drive mounted in. There's no way to secure it. Maybe some modifications or something. There's a serial port there, right? You're going to match that up with this guy right here. When you buy this, it does have a clear... A cover over that to protect the pins there you would just take that off I've already tossed that and it's just gonna plug in like so that's it right that is the just of it beyond that you do have a couple of screws there it's a Phillip or flathead I'm sorry not a Phillip but a flathead that just makes it so that this thing doesn't come out so that works out good so We've got that connected and that's pretty much that. All right, so this is where all the fun part is gonna happen. Um, going to go ahead and get this thing all connected. So first things first, I've already made a discovery that I'm willing to share with you guys. Um, this uh, Kaiko adapter, this one, for whatever reason, it does not allow the HDMI signal to go out of the adapter into a capture card. Works perfectly fine directly connected to a television, but for whatever reason, it does not allow me to do any capturing. Um, so I was very frustrated. Um, spent many hours trying different things because the software on the memory card allows you to change resolution and things of that sort, but it just doesn't work. Um, I am going to be ordering the adapter from the company Pound, which that worked perfectly fine for my Dreamcast and it ran through the capture card and everything. My, what I need is I need for stuff to work on my desk. If it doesn't work on my desk, then it does me no good. But this adapter does work. So for reference of this video, uh, we are going to connect it. So everything is going to be pretty much simple. Plug and play adapter is going to go into the back of PlayStation. Right, just like that. Pass there. There's the mini USB cable that is provided. It's going to go into 
one of these ports. You cannot have anything plugged into the other because this adapter needs the full bus uh, load of power to be ran. Now you can plug this into another adapter but or for a wall outlet, but you're just adding more for yourself. You're gonna go HDMI in to adapter like so. Let's make sure that's all plugged in. And then the HDMI in the back of a TV like normal. Um, so let me get this plugged up and then we'll get back to powering it on. Once again, man, you can feel free if you're interested in checking out my uh, review of this stick. This stick has been modified with better Americanized parts than what came to it. This stick does come with one cable um, that has Xbox original and PlayStation 2 or PlayStation 1 connectivity. Just plugging that in. And the last piece is going to be this memory card. I bought this three pack again. These are all going to be in the description. Um, this is plug and play. This software that you need is just there. It just when you turn this thing on, it just boots up and gives you some different options you can play around with. Turn this thing on. See what we got. Yes, indeed. So free McBoot is going to be the software that comes preloaded on the memory card. It, it does all the work for you. Ooh, this feels pretty good. So you got a lot of different options. I'm not going to cover all of those different options. Um, one thing we're going to do though, is we're going to go to HD loader. HD loader puts us in a position where we can essentially see the contents that we have loaded onto the hard drive. Okay. So we got these games. Most of these games you've seen this whole list. I showed this list prior to me, um, putting the newer games on there. The latest two games that I put on there were the anthology of uh, Street Fighter Alpha and then the 15th anniversary uh, collection of Street Fighter, which has your third strike and your Street Fighter 2 and some other different things. <laughs> we're going to go to my pride and joy though. CVS 2. It's one of the things I loved about the PlayStation 2 was that it, it, it managed to give you so much i mean you know playstation 2 became the standard for cvs2 on a console level you know when dreamcast systems couldn't be found weren't being used as a standard sony had you covered with a version of this game that worked pretty damn well Kindred Ike. Oh man, this this is interesting. Ooh, man, American stick. That roll cancel. Man, just brings back so many memories. What we used to do. <laughs> yeah, we used to do some sick shit, man. Man, it just brings back a lot of memories, man. Playing on this stick golden you know what i mean and then playing cvs2 it's like man i'm already working up a sweat because i used to i mean i i used to get busy with this thing man so this is an awesome thing if you dudes got any questions about anything that took place in this video um something you feel like i didn't cover properly uh if you do go to do it and, and there's a step or an error or something that you see there actually is a couple of errors in the beginning of um doing the the piece that's on the computer 
So if you got questions about that, let me know. There's other YouTube videos you can you can uh, research for that too. But you know, this is my original PlayStation 2, my original uh, 15th anniversary arcade stick, playing one of the games, one of the games that I was famous for. Uh, CVS2 is something I took very very seriously, man. I was so passionate about this game. But yeah, if you got questions, leave them in the comments. Um, I appreciate the support. We're over 3K. I do have a gaming channel, so playing games like CBS2 online with other people is something I plan on doing on my channel. Check the description of this video. I'll link my gaming channel. There's no content there. We're not gonna start uploading there until next Monday. Today is Saturday as I'm recording. It's not this Monday, but next Monday, we're gonna get that up and going. Um, as always, Max Love.